I want to introduce Chief Meteorologist uh, for Channel 5, Bill Walsh. Bill has served as WCSC's Chief Meteorologist for 25 years. Actually, I was in the Navy Reserves with Bill, a good, good friend of mine. Um, he also served as Chief Meteorologist for my station now, that now, WCIV, for six years. He's a two-time Emmy Award winner, five-time Telly Award winner. Bill has served on the U.S. Special Operations Command as Lieutenant Colonel for the United States Air Force Reserve. He's received a meritorious service medal from the Department of Defense and the Air Force, among other awards. Throughout his career, he's covered both hurricanes and severe storms. And today, Bill's going to talk about those experiences and lessons he learned. Bill Walsh. All right, thanks, Thank you, my friend, Trooper Bob, right here. My goodness, give it up for this guy. How many years in Iowa, Bill? 25. 25 years. Oh, my gosh. Holy mackerel. 25 years. Wow. Who could be someplace for 25 years? I can't figure that. I don't know what it is. It's a tough room, let me tell you right now. You guys are amazing. They, oh, by the way, it's great to come out. I didn't bring my bathing suit because I didn't know it would be so close. I would have had the surfboard. You know, Bob knows. I, you know, we surf. We used to surf together. You know, Bob, back off the big island. <coughs> Just kidding, that's all made up right there. But, um, it is always good to come out and talk about hurricanes. Tomorrow is the first day of hurricane season. It runs to the end of November. The peak of hurricane season is around the 10th of September. And if you look back in history, some of our biggest storms have been in September. Hurricane Hugo, 1989. Anybody here for Hurricane Hugo? A couple, okay, all right, yeah. That was a September storm, September 21st. Hurricane Floyd, if you remember that one back in 99, we had that big giant Huge evacuation. It was a drive to nowhere in about 15 hours. That was that was colorful. I that. So uh, we've had quite a bit of uh, hurricane activity over the last couple of years. We've seen hurricane activity increase, and uh, the forecast. I don't want to be the bringer of bad news, but at least we know about it. Uh, the forecast is for about 23 named storms. Right. Normal is about 14. So we're going to be trending above normal. Last year we had 20 named storms. So last year was a pretty busy year, but the pattern was great for us because a lot of those storms were kicked off the coast, right? They just kind of went out to sea, uh, except for one or two of them that came by kind of close, but it wasn't anything big for us. So the good news is that it really, we were lucky last year with the pattern. It really is a spin of the big weather wheel. I mean, you know, we are in a beautiful area. We live in a gorgeous place, a gorgeous part of the country, but one of the threats is hurricanes. So we have to be prepared. I always tell people the best thing to do as far as hurricanes is be prepared. And how do you be prepared? Well, you do stuff like this. You have a plan, you have a kit, you have an evacuation plan. You know where you're gonna go ahead of time and you know what the evacuation routes are and stuff like that. So, I mean, hurricanes uh, are really mother nature's way of releasing heat energy. Um, they are amazing, incredible storms. I mean, we've had big ones, <clears throat> we've had smaller ones, Hugo was a 135 mile an hour storm, 935 millibar pressure, 22 feet of water in McClellanville. It was so high at Lincoln High School where they were evacuating people to, they had to put people up in the rafters. That's how high the water was in McClellanville. Now, the center of that storm moved right over Charleston, right over the harbor. Now, had that center moved over Kiowa Island, well, that 22 feet of water north and east of the center would have been over the downtown area of Charleston. Had that center moved over, say, Edisto Beach, even as far south as Buford, that 22 feet of water would have been right here on Kiowa Island in Seabrook. So again, we're talking about placement of a storm, how it you know, affects the coast, the angle of attack it takes toward the coast. So hurricanes, everyone's different. Everybody, I love when we have a storm out there. First of all, everybody says, are we in the cone? Are we in the cone? We're in the cone. I mean, she was like, did Cantori come? What's going on with that? Jim and I are good friends, went to college together. In fact, he comes here quite a bit. And he, <laughs> you know, wherever he goes is, is bad news. But, <laughs> but if you're in the cone, God knows, whether it's vanilla or whatever, you don't want to be in the cone. But the cone is still a little bit mis, well, not, I won't say misleading, but you got to remember the cone is wide. Notice the cone goes out in time. Because the, the, the error is about 200 miles on each side of the line in the middle of that cone uh, toward the latter part of that forecast period. In other words, 
You could be, for example, remember Hurricane Charlie that really destroyed Southwest Florida. It was a very bad storm. It went from a depression to a Category 4 hurricane in 48 hours. It was a rapidly intensifying storm. It was pointed right towards Southwest Florida. The cone went right up to Tampa, Florida. Now, Tampa's a big place. It's a big market. It's a big TV market, right? Big, big market. I think it's number 12 out of 212 markets in the country. It's a major city. So as Charlie was pointed toward Tampa, everybody was talking about Tampa. Well, Tampa's going to get a storm. The Tampa's going to evacuate, you know, uh, Hillsborough County, you know, Pinellas County, all the way, uh, Tampa, Tampa, Tampa. They're right in the middle of that cone. Well, way on the bottom right side of that cone is a little town called Punta Gorda. A little tiny place, just right on the edge of the cone. Well, that storm didn't end up going to Tampa. The center of that storm went right over Punta Gorda, Florida. And the whole focus was on Tampa because Tampa was a major city, right? It's a big population center. Punta Gorda, Lee County down in Southwest Florida, kind of small. But they took the brunt of that storm as it weakened and actually made a second landfall up the road here, just north up of uh, McClellanville, up toward the, uh, Georgetown. Charlie actually made two landfalls. So did Ian. Remember Ian that crushed Southwest Florida? That was a nasty storm. You know, Category 5 borderline, right? And that made a second landfall again up here toward the, between McClellanville and Georgetown. So, I mean, storms can come into southwest Florida and then they can come back over the ocean and recurve back into the U.S. coast here across South Carolina. But my point on the cone is that if we are in the cone, it doesn't matter where you are in that cone, you are in a high point of possibilities of seeing the center of that storm. But don't focus on the center. I always tell people, don't focus on the center. Storms are not just dots, right? Storms are big. Some of them are the size of Connecticut. They're huge. These are big storms. The wind field for a hurricane force wind and a major storm usually goes out about 70, 80 miles from the hurricane force winds and over 270 to 300 miles north and east with the tropical storm force winds above 40 miles an hour up to 74, right? Above 74, it's a hurricane. So, I mean, we're talking about you know, a big piece of territory for this big storm to come over. So we, we always tell people, don't focus on the points when you're talking about that forecast. Even if we're in the cone, that's important, but even if we're near the cone, that's also important. Remember Sandy? Remember Sandy with Connecticut? I mean, New York, it flooded New York City, did all kinds of nasty up the coast, all the way up into Long Island. Uh, that storm was not even officially a tropical system, it was a hybrid system when it made landfall up, or at least went along the coast of Long Island. That was a very, very bad storm. It was extra tropical. In other words, it was transferring to becoming a cold core versus a warm core tropical system. Bottom line is, it was a big wind machine. And it pushed a lot of water up into Jersey, a lot of water back up along the Jersey coast, all the way back up into, uh, even on up into New England. And then the center of that storm ended up going up into, uh, up into Vermont and putting all kinds of flooding up there. And another thing I tell people about hurricanes is that they don't stop at the coast. Everybody just focuses on the coast, right? Here we are, beautiful. I mean, this is gonna be, you know, if a hurricane made landfall right here, we would all be down in Boca, but it wouldn't happen. <laughs> I'd be under the desk over there, Channel 5, you know, I'm just down. <laughs> People say, what are you doing? I'm so I said, <clears throat> I sleep in the back, honestly. I actually use the, the, the pads from the, from the couches in the, in the lobby as a bed behind the set. I mean, it's it's a step. We all stay there. We, we, Bob knows it. we all stay. We work. This. He's on the road though. He's out there doing live shots. Aren't he? But <clears throat> I'm I'm at the station. So you know, the, the thing is, the storms don't stop at the coast. They keep going inland. And when they do, they bring a lot of damage inland. In particular, flooding damage. More people die in hurricanes from flooding than they do from wind damage. So flooding is one of the biggest issues with a hurricane, not only the storm surge, but inland rain flooding. Do you remember a little storm called Florence a couple of years ago? <clears throat> it was coming toward the coast. It was coming toward the Outer Banks of North Carolina. It was a Cat 4. It slowed down. It got kind of sheared. It was weakened to a Cat 1. And it made landfall right around Atlantic Beach, Florida, uh, North Carolina. And then it turned around and came backwards. It came south. It wasn't going north. It was being forced south by high pressure to the north. So it started kind of working its way down, almost 17, all the way down into Myrtle Beach. It put 22 inches of rain in northeast South Carolina, southeast North Carolina. It flooded. I mean, it was incredible flooding. This was 
a weakening category one, it became a tropical storm. Then it sort of went left and recurved back up toward Conway and up toward Lumberton, North Carolina. But it put a lot of rain, a lot of flooding up into North Carolina and South Carolina. But that was just a little category one by the time it made the landfall. So, you know, there's a lot of people focus on the category, they focus on the track, they focus on the dot. Hurricanes are big events and they cause all kinds of damage. One hurricane can be a different hurricane for wherever you happen to live, right? So Hurricane Hugo made landfall over the harbor, midnight, September 21st into 22nd, 1989. I was young. <laughs> you see the hair? It's prayer. And that's because of Hugo, Florian, Bertha, Pine, Frank. But, but the thing is, when it made landfall over the harbor, here at Kiowa, we didn't see winds very much over 60, 70 miles an hour. And they were also offshore winds. They were coming from that direction, not that direction, because the center of the storm was to our north. So the folks in McClellanville had a category four hurricane, no doubt, 135 mile an hour winds. They had winds in excess of 178 with some of the buoys gusting offshore. The further you get to the south, the less impact that storm gave. In fact, it wiped out Sullivan's Island, Isle of Palms, Folly Beach, and then down in Kiowa, we have damage but we didn't have the damage they had over at Folly or even on, as close as uh, Sullivan's Island, Isle of Palms, downtown Charleston, all the way up the coast. Because we were to the south of the center here at Kiowa. If you are north and east of the center, that's bad. South and west of the center, better. Way away, the best. <laughs> I mean, Montana. When was the last time I had a hurricane? Come on, think about it. Right? I mean, think about that. I mean, now you have to shovel, you know, you have to shovel snow up there, right? But, you know, where you are in relation to a hurricane is critical. So as we track these things, we will give you that first alert. You like that brand, the first alert thing? Yeah, first alert. Yeah. Anyway, we will give you the poop of what's going on. It's up to you to make that decision as to whether you stay, go, where you want to do. But just remember that that forecast changes every six hours from the National Hurricane Center. They will adjust the cone. They will adjust the system. They will look at the Hurricane Hunter um, you know, and, and some of the data coming from that, Bob and I were with the Hurricane Hunters a couple weeks ago, something like that, right? <clears throat> they were right here in town. Uh, I've flown with that. Anybody flying a hurricane lately? Okay. Well, um, well, if you flown with Delta, it's sort of like that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Although I was on Delta flight the other day coming from Portland, Oregon. I thought I was in a hurricane, but that's okay. That's something else. But <clears throat> I have flown in a hurricane. I flew in Hurricane Andrew, 1992, very bad Cat 5 hurricane. And then it made landfall in South Florida, and then made a second landfall up in Louisiana up and along the Gulf Coast. So again, it is, it is, you know, where you are is critical to what you get with a hurricane. So bottom line is to be prepared, be ready, keep the app close. You know, we have these things, me, Channel 5, Channel 4 has a great weather app. Dave Williams, fantastic guy, we've been friends for years, Rob Fowler, we all do the same thing, right? We're not really competing with each other, we're just getting information out. So the apps are really, really good not only to tell you what's going on, but to give you evacuation routes and radar and all that other stuff. And then, you know, feel free to reach out. You know, reach out anytime. Send us an email, send us a note, and say, hey, what do you think of this or whatnot. And I'd love to show you around the station. If you have a, a group where you want to come out and see us, we'd love to show you around. I, I don't have a lot of time because we're on a schedule. Anybody have questions I can try to answer? Um, any questions you might have about hurricanes? We're the first one will land. Um, what time it will be, uh, what kind of impact we'll have, any uh, questions about the, the season, yes sir? How much better are the predictions today than they were when you go? Oh my gosh, that's a good question, great question. So we have much better models. How much better in predictions are we? Very much better. We're much better with the track forecast. We're still trying to get that intensity forecast, that's the toughest part, how strong it's going to be. But the track forecast is really good. The, the modeling right now, we have the Euro, the, the GFS, the general, the, uh, the, the American model, we've got the no gaps, we've got all these models, all these, you know, they call them the spaghetti models, right? So we look at what, what's performing best with that storm. But the modeling is much better because they're much more sophisticated. So we're really good. That, now the intensity, you know, how strong it's gonna be is still, still tough. That's the toughest part of the forecast because they can rapidly intensify like I said with Charlie, from a, a depression to a, to a strong category four. Uh, and we had that with, uh, with the storm down in Mexico Beach, Florida, Michael. Uh, Dorian spun up over the Bahamas, became a cat four, almost a five, just sat there. So, you know, getting that intensity is tough. But to answer your question, much better. And back then, in Hugo, we only went out three days. You know, now our forecast models go out 200 plus hours. 
<clears throat> so, you know, it's <clears throat> definitely better. Well, it seems like during the hurricanes, uh, the, I don't know if it's the Euro model or the American model, one of those, I think it's the Euro model, does a little bit better um, as predicted for the summertime. Is it? it depends how much money you put into the, uh, the little <laughs> uh, it's, um, You know, the Euro was better for a while, right, than the, the American model. For a couple of years, in fact. However, um, the, the NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, just decided a few years back to put more more into the GFS model. In fact, they redid it. They put they put a lot of research into it. So right now, I would say both models are about even, and they both done very well with the latest storms that we've had. So you really did. And, and again, when it comes down to, you can't really predict the storm until it's out there. And once it's out there, then you can see whether the euro is doing better with the storm, where it's been, where it is now, what it's been doing, or the GFS or the, uh, the no gaps, any of the, 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 the track models that we use, uh, the intensity models as well. So, um, you know, all of that goes into it. So, but they are much better now than, than, than they used to be. Yes, sir. What, what do you do when the models disagree? Well, well we have a big wheel, right? <laughs> you see that wheel of fortune, it spins around, and it says 20%, 80%. <laughs> well, when they disagree, you know, you, you go, well, first of all, we listen to the Hurricane Center, always first, because these guys are PhDs, they're down there. So, you know, when, when they're disagreeing with the models, we listen to their discussions, and when we talk to people, we say, look, this model says it's coming here, that model says it's coming here, you both need to prepare. And, and by the time it gets up this way, they're starting to agree more because we're further north latitude-wise. So, you know, usually, if it's within just, you know, 200 miles, that's one thing. If it's within 50 miles, everybody's going to get something from that storm. So, you know, we just go with what is performing best. Yes, ma'am. Is today a Dome of Delight day? Yeah, today is a Dome of Delight day. <laughs> Do you know how hard it was to come to that gate and not go to the beach? I mean, come on. Seriously. That is, this is, I mean... This is a Dome of Delight day. We have a beautiful day, mid to upper 80s, with no humidity today. Tomorrow will be about 86, lots of sunshine, still low humidity. By Sunday, we'll introduce a slight change of shower, 20%, a little more humidity, still be about 88. But by Monday, Tuesday, we start to get more of a return flow from the south, so we'll start to see probably near 90 by Tuesday, a little more humidity, and we'll keep a 30% change of showers and maybe a couple isolated thunderstorms in the afternoon on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. <laughs> Got that open. You guys are amazing. I'm so proud to come out and talk to you guys. Um, anytime I can get away from my wife's cooking. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. I'm in trouble. This is really <laughs> we got an anniversary coming up. I'll be on the porch. Uh, but anyway, um, love to come out to say hi. Come see us. Follow us online on the app. Um, and then follow our broadcast. All three stations do an amazing job in predicting hurricanes. This is a great market for weather. We've got great people that have been here a long time, and uh, it's, it's going to be fantastic. And tomorrow I'll mark 31 years at Channel 5, actually, which is amazing. So, yeah, they said it was nice, but that's okay. I mean, yeah. It goes where it is, right? And then, uh, and I enjoyed my six years at Channel 4. So, you know, a lot of us, Rob and I have been here almost as long, me a little bit longer, but the thing is, and Dave's been here for a long time. So you got a lot of experience, so we really are here for you. And that's what we are here for. And I'm so thrilled to come out and say hi to everybody. And again, come over and see us. Let's hope we don't need any kind of evacuation, but we will be ready. And you folks at Keo are doing the right thing, staying prepared. Thanks so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. All right, let's give another round of applause to Chief Meteorologist Bill Walsh.